Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobbers Plus, and today we're going to be working on a pair of ice skates. We're going to be converting these, as you can see, there used to be the metal skate there, and it was taken off already by the person who owns these, but he wants them converted to be able to wear them as a normal boot. So, we're going to convert these. So join us, check it out. This one's going to be a little bit of a different build than, uh, than some may expect, but we're going to have some fun and see what's going inside of this ice skate and see what's underneath because it's been a little while since I messed with one of these and really taken it apart plus ice skates all kind of range a little different but join us check it out and see how it's done Alright everyone, so first things first, these here as you can see are Blake stitch, so that means that the stitches go actually all the way inside here. And uh, the very first thing I need to go ahead and do, I've already taken out the laces at least out of this one. And you can see the stitches right there. Can you see that? But what I'm going to end up doing, because it's a little bit easier, especially when it comes to pulling out the threads themselves afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and sand up these edges real quick. I'll do that off camera because it's going to be quick and easy and takes more time for me to set up the camera than just sanding it. And it's not a really great shot, but that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Sand this out. I'll let you guys see what it looks like once it's all done being sanded and uh, we'll continue on. All right, everyone. So unfortunately, I had to set these aside yesterday. Uh, it ended up getting a little backed up. But anyways, I got the edges here sanded up. You can see right there. I'm going to grab this one. You can see that those stitches have been sanded down, so there's just a little bit showing and everything. So at this point, I've heated up the sole just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Now, a lot of times we actually use a um, you know thinning agent to deactivate the glues. However, this uh, is a composite sole here, so that thinning agent isn't going to penetrate well enough. But it seems like the heating did the trick fairly well here. So I'm just going to pull this off. Okay, there's a little pad there. I'll let you guys take a look at it here in just a second. I have an interesting itty bitty shank in there. You guys have probably seen that already. It's real tiny, especially for an ice skate. That's that's kind of interesting. I'll just get this sole off the rest of the way. So, see that shank? Look at that. Thing's tiny, right there. But uh, yeah, these stitches feel a little hard. It looks like there's a few areas where they actually ran staples in right there, and everything. So we'll pull those out as well. A lot of staples were used in these shoes, not not so much of a nail or anything, um, but you can see there's like this little filler here that was used, this tiny little one because there's a cavity here that's kind of empty, so they had to fill it at least a little bit to distribute the pressure. We're not going to reuse that, that's, yeah, that's not great. We're going to go ahead and put some cork in there, same thing with this little back heel one there that was just, just sitting there like that, and it, it, it is tiny. So we're going to be using some cork to fill that in all nicely. Now you can see all that goes clear through those holes there. Those are for the ice skates, obviously, or the blade for the ice skates. I mean, so that's kind of how it goes with those. Now the mystery are the stitches. Are they going to pull easily or are they going to be a pain? Looks like those might be a little bit of a pain. Let me see where I put my long needle nose pliers. I I think I took them to the machine. All right, so got my long needle nose pliers there. They're technically for fish hooks, but they work great for this stuff. So let's see how well this stuff will pull apart. It does not want to pull apart very well. Hmm. Look at that, it just wants to rip. But we do have to try to pull out these stitches as much as possible or completely if possible, but all right so yeah that's that was all that fussing and everything and there's a lot of staples anyways that's what all that noise was all about but man there's a lot of 
lot of little staples in here. Look at that. Just staples everywhere. So the little shank is still intact here, but um, we're going to go ahead and pull that out. And uh, we'll, we'll just replace this guy because, especially because we're converting it to a usable boot, we're going to want to put a little bit of a bigger shank in here put a wider steel shank plus anyways I have to move it back because it's it's right here in the middle of the foot we want it to kind of start way back here and just come up to about right there so it's a little too far up for this now I've seen this done in ice skates and they obviously do that on purpose because it's an ice skate so ah, there it is my heel pry man thing is not wanting to come out just shot off that staple somewhere but yeah, these uh, little shanks here are just just enough to give a little bit of stability on those. And so with these stitches here, however, they are tough. They are worn in such a way where they're just getting hard. They're they're crispy and everything. So this is going to be something that's going to take me a little while to pull it all out. So I'm going to go ahead and get all that taken care of. And then once I'm all done... The next step is to glue up some of these spots right here, like that there, get all that glued up, and then fill this in with cork. Well, put that wider steel shank in there and everything. I'll show you guys what that shank looks like a little bit later, but for now i got to get this taken care of so everything can start curing on that. So I'll see you back in a few. All right, everyone, so we're back here again with these. Now we're gonna press some of these down I've got that shank in there now the shank here isn't quite sitting flat obviously because it's got a bit of a curvature to it but that's because the ice skates originally were kind of flat well now that we're putting the shank in here got to give it just a slight curvature I got that wider shank in there and we're gonna go ahead and get these tacks and the glue isn't holding it in place completely because it's trying to resist against it so we're gonna put these tacks into these small holes take this guy out here Sometimes that happens, but there we go. And these tacks are going to go inside and turn into a hook for me, and that way it holds in place nicely. And then right on the back edge of the heel here. There we go. And I've got the cork pieces in the oven right now. It's nice and warm. Try to fill in as much as we can of this because obviously there's a lot of sections that are cut kind of unevenly and everything but i still want to at least try to get as much as we can filled in now at this point i'm gonna go ahead and let this cure overnight because it's already the end of the day here anyways and uh, i am however going to prep prep the midsole because the goal of these that we're going to do is that the midsole is going to be kind of like the uh, the welt. It's going to act like that. In other words, that's kind of the build that we're going after. So we're going to Blake stitch the leather midsole on and then the sole is going to be stitched around on the outside. But the leather midsoles, they're a neutral color. So we're going to prep that. Let me show you how that looks. Like. All right. So like I mentioned, so this basically is going to be sitting upward towards the boot. Let me grab it real quick. Grab the right one there. Like that. And so we're going to go ahead and stitch that sole directly to that midsole there afterwards. But as you can tell, it's a light color, so we got to make sure we darken it up so that it doesn't stand out. Sometimes when we forget, we have to do that at the end, and it ends up being a lot harder to do because we can get the dye on the uppers or the edge ink or whatever we put on there to darken it up. So i got a fresh new bottle here. This is Phoebe's, uh chocolate color here. And this is one of those things that's always hard to remember as far as getting it all prepped up and ready to go before gluing on the sole probably do, be doing this with gloves but eh, whatever I gotta get going because it's time for dinner I'm always working late here I already got some chocolate brown on my fingers all right but we're just gonna just apply with a dauber basically nothing too fancy just like that and it's mainly the edges that I'm after not so much the center 
because especially once we're all done and we'll put a cream on there and it'll darken it up a little bit too so put two coats on there in a second and these are one of the reasons why never want to wear nice shoes here at the shop so if you're ever wondering about the shoes that I'm wearing I wear beat up junk shoes well, they're not quite junk they're just shoes that I have and they they're not all that great for any kind of occasions or anything like that just things that I can wear out maybe I'll do a video if you guys want let me know comment down below if you want to see what the cobbler wears I know some of you have seen me wearing flip-flops and stuff and sometimes I do that because I can still wash my feet afterwards if I spill something on there. And if it's a little bit of dye like this, that's okay. It just takes a little longer for it to come off. Now one way, if I'm kind of in a bind and I need this to dry very quickly, I can actually take a lighter to it because this is an alcohol-based dye. But I'm not in a rush, so I'm going to let these dry naturally. And there we go. Like I said, the center we can leave alone because we're still going to kind of rough that up and sand it a little bit so that it's uh, it can adhere better to the boot. But at this stage, we're kind of done. Let it cure. The cork is curing also, so we'll see you back here in a little bit. All right, everyone. So I've got these uh, stitched up and everything and glued up. Uh, gone ahead and done that off video because we're going to do more stitching anyway. So you guys can check that out. But we did some uh, Blake stitching you can see down in there. And so now the leather midsole is stitched on. I got the uh, house grade sole on here. Gentleman did pick out the house grade sole for now because we're doing so much of a conversion on here. Upgrading to the JR leather, he thought he'd hold off until later on. So these are going to be resolable in the future. So at this point, I'll just stick this on the press and let it sit for a little bit and uh, let it cool off. And then we'll start trimming up, see all that extra. And a lot of this scrap material we like to save because it's great for a little buildup. Sometimes we just need a little wedge for something to hold it up for a short period of time. All those little scraps, they come in handy for something. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. And uh, we'll see you back in just... So you had seen that uh, I've gone ahead and sanded out this area here and that's because we're going to be doing some sole protectors on there so we've got everything stitched around nicely around the edges you can see that and uh, we're going to go ahead and stick on the sole protector there I've got the heel base on this one I'm going to do the other heel base here in a second I just got to get the sole protector on because it's thinner material for sure Now we try with the sole protector to keep them as even as possible with this heel base and everything, but sometimes when the shoe is angled a certain way and it's just not possible to get it just right. So it's just a little bit at an angle, which is perfectly fine. That's uh, part of it here. Take that off. See? 
So it's just a little slight angle, but a lot of brands actually do that. There's one brand of shoe, I've got them here. I can't remember what, what it's called, but they actually angle it the opposite way, which is really weird that they would do that on a shoe. But this, while it's still hot, I gotta stick on the press really quick and uh, we'll continue on. All right, everyone. So now that we've got the heel bases attached on there, obviously we've got to trim it out still. There's, you can see that chunk sticking out there. But right now I got to figure out the leveling. You can see there's this large gap right there. And even if I put it down, there's still a bit of a gap, just a little bit. But we have to get this top lift on there for durability. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, because this is stacked leather, you can see the lines, I'm going to go ahead and take out one layer of this here because it's a little too thick. Um, this is, after all, a pre-built heel, ba heel base that we're putting onto these. I'm going to take out one layer and see how it works. So give me just a second to pull off that layer there for all right everyone so i've taken down one layer but as you can see there's still going to be a gap right there so when i push down you can see that lifts up that becomes a little bit of an issue with a lot of boots and shoes that if it's not properly angled this section right here is going to dig into your foot quite a bit and it's not going to be comfortable but uh i still have to grind this down anyway so i'm going to grind it down at a little bit of an angle and that way everything sits a little more flush as well. So let me run that over to the sander, trim it up and sand it. And we'll keep going. All right, everyone, so we got everything leveled out, as you can see. I'm moving my hand on that, but it's easier when I put my hand inside. So no rocking, that's a good thing. No gaps, none of that kind of stuff. Now time to go ahead and uh, glue it all up and move on. got these all finished out threw some leather laces in there that look pretty nice i leave them full length at 72 inches and then after the gentleman ties them up he can cut them however he prefer um, he could change out the laces if he wants something else in there but i thought the leather ones look really nice personally in there so these are basically all done i did get that sole protector on there like i mentioned uh, i originally i forgot that i needed a sole protector and uh, put that on there so converting ice skate boots into regular boots for everyday use so it was an interesting project i liked it it was one of those things i've worked on ice skates before but uh converting them i haven't really shown that off so yeah all done make sure to condition it up and everything too if you have any questions or comments leave them down below but if they're a longer question make sure to send us a message either on facebook instagram or our email address all that's in the description below um this particular boot obviously i don't know enough about it as far as like the brand goes or anything um so there won't be any kind of link in the description for referrals or anything like that otherwise um yeah Make sure you hit that uh, thumbs up button if you enjoyed that video, for sure. Uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell icon for other future projects and interesting jobs such as these. And uh, make sure you share the video too, especially if you have somebody that skates and everything and if they decide to retire a pair of their ice skates and maybe get them converted like these vintage ones here. 
let them know and they can check it out. So again, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.